Okay, so I'm here with Shannon Smith at um, Birth Passion Midwifery. And Shannon's been in the birthing sphere for 20 plus years now, which is a long time. That's a lot of babies to have <laughs> worked through during that time frame. And she just actually mentioned um, before we started talking here that, um, you know, like just literally within the last week, she's, she's had three babies, supported three mamas to bring their babies in the world, which is just, that is a lot of work. And Shannon also, uh, about three months ago, we had a little boy, our first little boy, and Shannon was our midwife and was super, super supportive. Um, my wife definitely loved having her as her midwife and uh, we'd definitely do it again if we could have more babies, so. Yeah. Shannon, can you give us a little little background on what um like spurred you on into this this journey of midwifery? Yeah, you bet. So, when my husband and I got married and had our first baby, he would go to work and I would just stay home and would read everything that I could get my hands on. And so we were nineteen and twenty, and so even though I was nineteen, I was a very educated mama and um, just had a beautiful hospital birth, my first baby. Um, yeah. Had a wonderful experience and but then as my friends started having babies and I was just kind of noticing people around me just having some like just kind of horror stories and I'm like oh my goodness and I just noticed a lot of um, lack of people being informed so informed consent kind of became a big thing for me hmm. and then um, just this education was was also a big thing for me and so just that is what really spurred me like it doesn't have to be like that so that uh -huh. is probably like my my what really pushed me into midwifery, but so, yeah. So you'd already, you, um, how old was you, were you when you had your first child? 19. 19. Okay. And then, and so you had your first child in a hospital setting, kind of standard setting. Yeah. I, I had a, um, a midwife for my first three babies okay. in the hospital. And then we had our last two at home. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. Cool. Cool. And what would you, so say a, a woman out there is thinking like, man, you know, I heard, I heard that there's like these things called midwives out there. Um, but like, can't, I mean, what do they, what could they really do? Is that like, that seems kind of like shady or is that right. that's like that's scary? Um, maybe in my house, what, what is, what is something that you might, might, might bring up or help spur confidence in um, midwifery to, to somebody out there? Well, you know, so there's OBs and there's, you know, nurse midwives and there's home birth midwives. And mm -hmm. we kind of all somewhat provide the same service is that we help you through your pregnancy and help you deliver your baby. Um, but you deliver your baby. We don't do that, but you have all the power. Um, we're a little bit more relational based care. You know, we definitely our appointments are longer. You get tons of time to answer any questions you may have. We're the beauty of midwifery, one of my favorite things is that we're there for your prenatal care, we're there for your birth, we're there for your postpartum. So you kind of, we build this beautiful relationship and it's like saying goodbye to friends at your final visit. And so uh -huh. that's probably my favorite part of one of my, well, it's all my favorite actually, but probably one of my favorite parts is just the, the beautiful relationship that we get to build. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And what would you say is like the moment where or maybe a few moments where you thought, man, this is, I just got to keep doing this. This is like the thing I have to like, because I mean, I know from the midwives we've experienced, we've probably like three, kind of three or four midwives that we knew pretty well through our pregnancies um, with six kids. And um, I mean, it seems like you're just, you know, it could be like up all night <laughs> for mm -hmm. yeah. three hours, three days straight, or, you know, it's like, it takes, it is definitely, um, you know, like giving up, I would say in a lot of ways, your, your health, for the, for the help of the, these other um, yeah. um, um, couples and, and the birthing process. So what was the thing that, um, or is there a moment where like, man, no matter what I gotta, I gotta do this. It's pretty, yeah, well, yes, yes and no, yeah. So um, probably that what spurs me the most or one of the things, cause I think that they almost all do is watching a mom who may, may be a little bit insecure or not very confident in her ability and just watching her go through this beautiful process and this really hard thing of letting a human being come out of your body. I mean, that's yeah. intense, right? Yeah. And then just watching her blossom into this confident woman who can do hard things and realize that she can do hard things. And then mm -hmm. watch this mama bear come out. And I mean, feeling, having that confidence of feeling that you can do something really hard changes you yeah. and it changed the way that you parent. I mean, and, and that can change the world, right? Like mm -hmm. that is 
probably like my my favorite part of birth and, and midwifery is I guess I keep saying that it's all my favorite, but I mean it yeah. is. I really have a passion for it. Uh huh. And so do you? So say a a, um, a a woman has has a baby at home. Do you do you see any difference in that in that woman? You know, before she has a baby at home, after she has a baby at home, and and how she like holds herself in like that. Oh yeah, for sure. You do. You do absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. One thing I was I was thinking this morning is that um. So when we had our first baby at the hospital, um, and it was, I mean, a good experience. There was definitely not, nothing. Everything just went <laughs> good, easy, you know, easy. Birth is normal uh, most of the time. Uh, and, um, but I was thinking, you know, when we had a, really the only thing I was personally thinking is I didn't, well, I didn't want any, you know, um, like shots or anything or vaccinations, that kind of stuff, like, especially that, that first day, um, you know, within the first 24 hours when we're at the hospital. And that's so my main thing was like, okay, I just don't want, that's my, all my focus. That's my responsibility to <laughs> make sure this baby <laughs> liberty is in my hands and like, nobody tries to do anything to her. Um, but, uh, other than that, I would say in a lot of ways, um, like I can never have my cell phone with me and like, you know, texting some people and, um, like not really being like, I would not feel like stressed out about it at all or like feeling like I, there was any responsibility for me to take. Mm -hmm. Um, however, you know, with the subsequent five, uh, five, yes, five, five home births, um, it's like me and I feel like so much more responsibility, even though I'm like, there's not like, I guess a ton I can do, um, but um, just being um, way more present and feeling like, man, this is like, this is like a huge, huge, huge deal. What just happened here? Like you see everything from start to finish, you're like right there um, versus feeling like you're kind of, even though I was in the room for the, the initial birth, I wasn't it's still, it feels like you're just like letting the nurses, letting the doctors kind of do everything and you're just kind of off to the side. So I, I feel like uh, one thing that makes midwifery just awesome is that you, know, you, you basically kind of promote this entire experience and people get to see like the, just the complete craziness and miracle that is of childbirth. Like you get, you get, you get everything happens, you know, you, even the placenta coming out is like, wow. <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's definitely a family event if they so choose, if you know, if a mama chooses and um, yeah, dads can be much more involved. Yeah, for sure. And do you, uh, is there anything that, uh, you know, basically leading up to a, a pregnancy or, or the birthing process that you're like, okay, this, these are things that I always like have really want to make sure are lined up or I, I tell the mother or the couple to make sure I line up before, um, you know, the actual day of, the birth happens. Do you have anything specific? What do you mean lined up? Um, just like, uh, is there any like particular, you know, say, uh, um, do these kind of activities or do these stretches or do these, um, um, you know, make sure you have this in your, in your, your, your refrigerator or in your cupboard um, or uh, anything like as, that? As far as the home environment, um, not necessarily. So there are yeah. some things but not necessarily. I do like the house to have a heat source. It doesn't have to be electric heat. Doesn't have to be, you know, we just need to keep the baby warm. So I think uh -huh. sort of lighting is great, right? Running water uh -huh. is great, <laughs> but uh -huh. you know, there are some people who live off grid. As far as things for mom, um, you know, we've got some great research that so shows that exercise, especially starting in the first trimester, just walking, mm -hmm. um, greatly reduces your chances of having preeclampsia. And so I ask, you know, I suggest it, you know, get out there uh -huh. and walk. That's all you can do. That's great. So yeah. exercise is great. I like everyone to not eat processed foods, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> so we do talk about nutrition a lot. We do talk about supplements a lot, but um, kind of as needed. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And is the, uh, is there any, any person like you sit down with them, because you know, you, you, when when we say you would you would want a lot of patients actually ask me this. When do I like need to get a midwife on board or CNOB? You know, I'm just just found out I'm pregnant and it's like four and a half weeks along. What is there a particular time you suggest a person like man get a hold of me now? Well, home birth midwives tend to fill up fast. You know, we we do it all, so we're busy. And uh -huh. um, when I say we do it all, I mean we do all the paperwork behind the scenes. We you know we do we do it all. So um, we tend to limit our how many people we take in what we call like a due month that that month. So if you're looking for a home birth midwife, you should probably get a hold of them as soon as you know you're pregnant. Gotcha. You fill up fast. Um, but I see people from as soon as they get that first pregnancy test to, to all the way to their final postpartum visit. Gotcha. 
eight weeks. Yeah. And so say a person's, uh, you know, 28 weeks long, uh, a lady is, and she's like, you know what, I, I want to do home birth. Um, is that, can they, could they still basically call the midwife or call you up and say, Hey, do you have, can you fit me in or that kind of thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. We take late, we call it a, a transfer or a late transfer all the time. Like you, if you're not in labor, if you're not pushing, we can talk. Uh huh. Yeah. And do you have any, um, is there any particular uh, like birthing stories? Um, I mean, you told us a lot of birthing stories, um, uh, for, and previously, um, any of that, that picture, like, man, those just it, are, um, just beautiful or are they really, um, say, man, they just, this is, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing right here. I would probably have to go back to where watching that mama go and just blossom into motherhood and confidence and feeling really assured about herself and about her abilities that mm -hmm. those ones stick out, but they do. I, I do remember them. They are so. Do you have, how about any, um, are there any, are any, are there any things that like really, uh, cause for me birth though, it's like completely natural, right? Yeah. It's like, I mean, there's been billions of, um, I'm a, you know, a humans born. So it's like, it's happened a lot of times and it. It'll, it'll just keep happening. It keeps happening every single day, you know, like every single minute people are, people are being born. Um, is there anything about, um, that, that process that you've, that scares you or, or is it feel like, you know, it's intense, but, um, how, how do you basically, I feel like, you know, fear can be a, a huge part of things going right or, or wrong. Is there any ways you go about trying to, um, basically engender confidence? Um, you know, not like, uh, being, uh, um, not, not being, you know, you're still care careful and all that kind of stuff and, and using wisdom and everything, but, but engender confidence in, a woman or the, the couple as a whole um, right. gotcha. when it comes to birthing? Yeah, you know, I really believe that the woman's body was created to have babies. And I think that just relying on that and knowing that most of the time birth is normal, that mm -hmm. I, I just rely on that a lot. I really think that God knew what he was doing when he designed the the process. And, and I trust that. Yeah. Now, we live in a fallen world. Everything's not perfect. Uh -huh. So, you know, midwives are trained to handle emergencies. And, and once you've been doing this for a little while, you kind of start to see it all. And, and you know what to do when you have those emergencies. And, yeah. and midwives are trained to um, either resolve the situation and we carry mm -hmm. on, or we can hold it steady until bigger help arrives. Yeah. It's so all the time, it's not a home birth at all costs. It's a healthy mom and baby at all costs. That's a good one. That's, that's a good one. Ash. Yeah, hope that's on your website right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real, that's a, that's a really, really good one. Yeah. Um, Cause I think, I mean, I definitely, I've seen um, women who've had or patients who've had home births or wanted to have a home birth, maybe had a home birth before or their family had a home birth and then they were trying to have a home birth um, or even within a, like a birthing center, it didn't, didn't work out. You know, they end up have, having to get a C-section or, um, and uh, you know, they kind of feel deflated or like, you know, somehow they didn't measure up or like, what's wrong with me? Um, but I, I think that is a, that is a huge key right there, <laughs> what you're saying. And I, I, I hope that they don't feel deflated or like what's wrong with them because there's right. no right or wrong way to have a baby, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Have a vaginal birth or a cesarean where, you know, sometimes we call them belly births that huh? regardless, it is huge. It is a huge, intense thing to let a human being come out of your body. Yeah. Yeah. And parenting isn't, isn't always easy. And postpartum is not always easy either, even though it's very natural. It's not always easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good way. A belly birth. That's what they should, definitely should start. Everything else is being changed on what we call things. You definitely, that's a good one. Though. That's a really good one to change things from C-section oh, to belly birth. Changed right. <laughs> that's a good that, one. <laughs> that's a good one. The, um, so what would you say? Is there like the, you know, if, say a person is not, people are not pregnant right now, or the woman is not pregnant right now. Um, is there any, anything that you suggest for women like going into wanting to become pregnant or is it, or is it generally like, man, just, um, uh, well, is, there is are there a couple of things. Yeah. So get on a good, healthy plant-based multivitamin or prenatal, especially one that has, you know, folate in it. Uh -huh. And then I also think that people should be on vitamin D3. Mm -hmm. And then also a good probiotic. Okay. Nice. And if they can walk or exercise at all, I think that's great as well. Nice. And how about the, uh, so the whole thing with like um, group B, group B strep, mm -hmm. is that, um, 
do you think you, you feel like you don't want to answer this, you don't have to answer this, but um, uh, I know it's always individual cases, but um, do you feel um, like sometimes, um, or in some cases that, you know, a, a patient won't need to have an antibiotic if, if, they're, if they're positive, you know, his, can, can you go from basically being positive to it, it not showing up and being, being confident you could have a baby without having any antibiotics during the, the birthing process? Well, sometimes there's just not time, right? Sometimes you sure. get there and dad's catching the baby. So, uh -huh. you know, sometimes you just never know. Uh -huh. um, and then sometimes we do have time, you know, with, with GBS, we know that the incidence of having a sick baby is very low, but uh, if it's your baby, I mean, it's a hundred percent, right? right? So, um, you know, it's, it's up to the parents ultimately mm -hmm. it's their decision on what they want to do. But yeah. if the, if the water isn't broken, then your exposure risk is minimal, right? So if, let's say their water breaks while they're pushing or crowning, then you okay. know that their exposure risk is very minimal. Mm. And once that water breaks, that's when, you know, they can, baby could be colonized, but for the most part, um, you know, and they have different protocols in different countries as well. So the yep. antibiotics isn't always, always used for every case. Mm -hmm. And is that, so say a woman had um, a uh, abdominal birth um, or belly birth previously, mm -hmm. is that, um, could a woman confidently say, which, I mean, I, I've, I know lots of friends and patients that, that have done this, you know, had, had a vaginal birth after um, a belly birth is that um, in, the, in Washington are, are you a, are you able to basically do a birth at home after having um, a belly birth? <clears throat> Excuse me, a VBAC. Yeah. So the thing is, is that our malpractice doesn't cover us. Gotcha. That that is the reason why some midwives won't do them. I, okay. I do them. You know, they have to sign it, informed consent. But yeah, okay. absolutely. If you've had a vaginal birth, that doesn't necessarily rule you out. Okay. And is that is that a um, is, are there things you can know ahead of time at all? Say, um, if a, uh, a woman has had a couple, um, belly births mm -hmm. and then, um, she's wanting to have a vaginal birth that would, um, like kind of clue you into like, okay, this is, this is, yeah, this, this is going to be, you're going to be a good candidate. You're not going to be a good candidate or, um, or even as it just gets, you know, farther along knowing that this is, this is, this could work out. There's a, the likelihood is really good of, you know, safety for both. Right. You know, if woman, if a woman has had a vaginal birth and then a cesarean and then wants to try to have a vaginal birth again, that's a really good indicator, right? That the pelvis is proven, right? It, mm -hmm. She can do it. If a woman has not had a vaginal birth before and wants to try, uh, I don't see why not. Like yeah. sometimes we've got a position, positional issue with baby. And then we really talk about that, but we always do around 36 weeks or so. We always do, um, an abdominal scarring ultrasound and make sure that scar isn't not abdominal, but a uterine scar window. Okay. We want to make sure that that is still intact and, and not thinning. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's, that's one thing that we do. Cool. And do you feel like, does it matter if, uh, say a woman has a, a baby in, in water versus the baby not in water land birth. <laughs> yeah. Does he, does either way matter or for a VBAC? Um, for anything, anybody Just for the birthing process itself. Yeah. Some women love the water and some women don't at all. I have found that more women enjoy the, enjoy the water. Um, you know, we use a new liner for every pool that way, every pool is a new pool. Right. Um, <laughs> So, but women like it. They say it takes away 50% of the pain and you're much more buoyant in the water and they really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I know my wife in probably, I mean, probably the, not the last one, the couple before we used, we used a tub and it, it did seem like the midwife was like, she would like get in the tub and she's like contraction, contraction, get in the tub. And it's like, oh, they're, they're all they're coming back. I'm like, okay, we got to get her out of the tub. Um, I mean, she had him. She did have um, our previous four in the tub, but, uh, uh, it definitely seemed like yeah, it is really relaxing or, or, you know, has a, just this kind of sedating effect almost. Um, it, can. it can, and it can slow the contractions out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes that's needed. Sometimes mom needs a little break. Sure. Oh, it's, I, they, whatever they need, they need, they, they just they deserve. Uh, so talking about the placenta, mm -hmm. I feel like the placenta is to me, it's like, Hey, the baby's going to come out. The baby's going to come out. The placenta part is always where um, I'm thinking that our baby's like, okay, we just want to make sure this whole placenta gets out of there. And um, as far as uh, even the 
uh, like the time you leave the placenta hooked onto the baby and not cut, do you find that that is have a value? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like delayed cord clamping, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oftentimes we don't even cut the cord till after the placenta has already been delivered. Cool. For sure. Yeah. You know, there was a study, I don't remember the year, but there was a study, but that was done that showed that babies who had their cords cut early versus cords left until the placenta was done pulsing, those babies who had early cord cutting were anemic still at three months of age. So wow. definitely letting baby get all of its blood supply to me is really important. I mean, then we're not dealing with jaundice and babies mm. who are really sleepy because, you know, they've got a, they got a lot of work to do. Yeah, so yeah. We definitely, we definitely leave the, even for babies who need to be resuscitated, need a little bit of help transitioning and coming around. Those uh -huh. babies do so much better still connected like you know in hospitals it's pretty standard to cut the cord if baby needs help and to take them over to the warmer where they can work on them mm -hmm. and i really try to leave them intact to leave them there and and um, help them come around closer cool. a little bit closer yeah yeah and so have you had to resuscitate a baby before oh yeah one in ten. Oh my goodness that's <laughs> it's intense it's a, it's a statistic yeah <laughs> wow that's intense so it can be <laughs> Oh man, wow, that, man, that's that's cool. No man, I, seriously, I think man, midwives, the amount of um, just have to have so much grace and just feel like oh. man, because the, uh, you know, if you're in a kind of like a standard setting, it's just like you're following this rule book or this, this protocol, and the, the protocol basically, as long as you follow the protocol, you know, it's like um, nobody nobody can say anything about you, kind of thing. But um, even though I know you're following a product, you, you have your own protocols and everything and how you do things, um, it's still, uh, you know, you're not under the guise of this huge system that is just, you're one of the cogs in the wheel. So it may, I, I'm just often a man. I don't think my, my nervous system, you know, <laughs> could handle that day in and day out, especially when you're walking into like, you know, un unknown. Yeah, sometimes I mean, people, can, people can be awesome. You know, they're like, you're the best thing ever until the baby happens and it's like once the baby you know if, especially if there's anything that goes wrong or it's not just how they were appear, you know expecting it to be right there's so many unknowns going into to birth no matter where you're at yeah. uh seems like you have to be quite you have to be prepared so we always set up so if we have time if we get there before the you know baby's being born we set up so we always set up for emergencies and mm -hmm. are prepared that way everything's ready right you know as we need it and we're not wasting time looking for it or gathering supplies or something it's always just right there and here we are we're dealing with it that's awesome yeah i mean i i personally have supreme confidence in midwives i mean i've always even like how a baby's situated in the belly um or the uterus it's like man the midwives like we don't even before we went the very first time i mean nothing wrong i mean we need all these all these practitioners for all these different things but um it's like it was pretty much like the the obstetrician had no clue where the baby was outside of you know if the ultrasound was like right on there and even with the ultrasound it's like still they were having it seemed like they would have issues um and ama my wife who's very into what's going on in her body would like sometimes be telling them no i don't that's not i don't that's not they're not there that's not like that way um whereas you know i've seen so many of you midwives you know like palpating the abdomen and literally being able to say no this is you know this is where everything is this is how everything is um and just having a, a general understanding of you know what's happening uh you know, like that art you guys have, which is just awesome. Yeah. It must make most, you feel so good. Yeah. Most of the time, sometimes we're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, most of the time, we, you know, we feel a lot of bellies. And so we don't always rely on technology to tell us something. And so you have to have sharp skills. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I think that I think that's super cool. Uh, so Shannon, is there anything that you specifically like, man, this is what I want to like, just um, let a mom know out there a or a to be mom uh mm -hmm. about birth pregnancy after birth anything between that could just you know give them some some confidence or some uh it's gonna be okay yeah well i i never say that it's gonna be okay <laughs> because we don't always know <laughs> right <laughs> but if there's one thing it would be to trust your body and to trust mm. your instincts mm. that would be my biggest thing listen yeah. to your body and listen to your instincts because you know it's there for a reason yeah yeah and so i'm just i'm just on that one if you um so one thing one, hopefully almost okay with you sending this but um a couple and a couple home births my wife was like okay this is not going to work out 
I'm done with this. Um, uh, like, I, I just want to get an epidural. I just, I, let's just, let's just not do this. Yeah. Um, in, in my mind, I'm thinking, no, you're, you're totally fine here. <laughs> I know how tough you are. Um, you know, that, and it's just like an, an emotional state, um, because of the pain and, and fatigue, um, present. So say, um, a mother, you know, is, is like, is voicing that in the midst of an entirely new experience for them. Do you, is there anything you do to like kind of figure out how genuine that is or not genuine that is? But, well, that is very genuine. I mean, they're hitting the end of their rope, right? Like uh -huh. they're, and I know if once they start saying that, I know we have like less than an hour till we have a baby. And, <laughs> you know, transition is almost all women say it like they're, or they're like, I can't do this anymore. Or, or they call on the Lord or the F word comes out. Right. It's just, like, it's the rubbers hitting the wall. Cause this is hard. Um, yeah. I know that babies very, very soon to be here. And, um, you know, sometimes they just need a little bit more encouragement. Sometimes, you know, a position change, sometimes just letting them know where they are in their labor really helps. And just talking to them. I tell people sometimes I'm just a really good cheerleader, right? Like, it's just, you've got this, you can do it. You're almost done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are definitely, you know, transition is the shortest, but the hardest part of labor. And I know that we're mm -hmm. just on the other end of pushing where, there's a surrendering part of labor where you just have to, you're just kind of along for the ride. You know, all these contractions are coming and you just basically get to sit there and let them happen to you and deal with them. And, wow. but once you get to pushing, you kind of, women feel like they can do something. They're a little bit more active participant in their labor. Yeah. And so um, I know that we're, we're pretty close to it at that point. That's... And sometimes, honestly, if we left, we would have a baby in the car, which would not be fun for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> or the ambulance, which also yeah. wouldn't be fun, you know, but. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay, Shannon. So how can, um, uh, say, a lady out there, a couple out there who wants to look at midwifery or mm -hmm. having midwife for birth, how can they get a hold of you? Oh, birthpassionmidwifery.com. Birthpassionmidwifery.com. So you guys will see that. We'll put it, put it below. And um, man, thank you so much, Shannon. Oh, thank you. I know your your life is so packed. You got a family of your own, and then you got you know all these other families you're helping out. <laughs> yeah. So um, thank, thank you so much you. for your time. My pleasure. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye bye.